Hello, this is Grant, and welcome back to Dead Rising 1 Master Run. So, it's a pretty easy episode here. We're just gonna go meet up with Kent and then get everyone back to the, house, the safe house. Man, I hate Kent as a character. He's very well designed. I think it's pretty clear that they put a lot of work into him, and he was probably created very early on because he's in Paradise Plaza, which is kind of like a home base, since you have to go through here all the time. And he has so many weird concessions where that nothing else in the game does. Uh -huh. Think, for example, no other survivor or psycho can spawn in when you're in an area. So, like, if you're already in Paradise Plaza, the cult can't all of a sudden show up when it's time. You have to leave and come back. But as long as Kent's scoop is started, like, for the timing and stuff, we have to come back. If you're in the plaza, he can pop in. I mean, that's because a lot of people might wait. So, it would be a little bit easier than... Something where, like, I don't know, they'd have to require you to leave, come back, and players might not know that. Whereas, really, there's no other scoop like that. Also, he's used as a tutorial for the photos, as we're going to see here. They kind of talk about, oh, this is how you take different photos. There's different categories. Make your subject large, which is something that I don't think the algorithm they use to score the photos is actually that good. Or at least it doesn't make sense. It's kind of odd. Like, this photo that I'm going to get to end this section that we're going to go do up here... I don't understand how it worked, but it did. Thinking back to like the first time I played this game, it was interesting just the level of discovery I had. Because at first you go through and it's just Paradise Plaza, I'm always on my way out somewhere. Particularly you'd be going out to the park, usually. And then it's like, oh, you find the back little at back area with the bathrooms like okay like I go there to save you can kind of dodge the less zombies and then you go find the second floor and like what unlimited food I'm always gonna come here this orange juice is amazing because I was only eating like snacks and whatnot and then it's like I heard about the katana and then it's like, oh well now I have to go get the katana and now it's like I, I hardly ever go up here there's no real point it's just weird seeing that progression I think it's kind of become kind of iconic where whenever someone's introduced you always the only tip you give them is like save survivors and there's a katana on the balcony <laughs> that's like the go-to thing for people which katana is a great weapon like i don't want to hate on it i would totally use it it's just i prefer the sledgehammer and it's immediately in my path where technically the katana is kind of out of the way from, barely but it is a great sacrifice weapon until you get the small chainsaw which Unsurprisingly, I could not kill Adam on my first try. I don't think I, I think I just ran away. Like, I triggered it, and like, oh, yeah, he's hard. I'm just going to not deal with this. Because when you don't understand Adam, it's it's quite the fight. I think a lot of Dead Rising's difficulty comes from lack of knowledge. Most stuff in this game, if you know the right way through, it's completely trivial. But if you slow down or stop, like, the zombies, they'll get on you. But if you run through them, it's just, they just kind of brush off. It's weird. I wish they would do things a little bit better in that way. The main issue I have would be that a lot of my... Man, that photo, I guess that counts. His favorite photo of him. Maybe that suggests that Kent thinks he looks terrible, so the best photo is the one where you can only see a thumb. Don't know. But yeah, I'd like to see some better difficulty. It kind of sucks that really the optimal strategy for nearly every encounter is... Just, as long as you're a decent level, just get the small chainsaw and run at them and swing at them. Because you almost always kill them before they kill you. Especially if you have food. If you can just wait until you're down to one bar, run away, heal up, do it again. She's actually in the game. You save her from Colby's Movie Land. When the cult's there, she's locked in a closet. A lot of people forget her. But she also has a scoop related to her where if you take her back to the safe room, she'll eventually call and she'll ask you to take photos of her, which all the everyone in the room will cheer, which I think is a nice touch. There's a lot of small little survivor details that I could tell. I think one person was really into their job and put a lot of love into it that doesn't really get noticed. There's one where if you ever aim a gun at a survivor and like in the aiming mode, they'll attack you. They don't, they don't fully aggro. They'll just kind of like knock you until you stop. It was a, it's kind of a weird little thing, but it's someone did that. Like, someone was checking, like, when player reticule was over survivor, like, aggro. 
It's kind of a, it's just an odd thing. Usually when I play, when I'm not recording, I just hit Y as much as possible just so I have something to do. It's like, come on, come on. Some of the names in this game are kind of entertaining. I love the idea of Cam's camera. Hilarious. This is another really well done scene. It introduces the idea of queens and it makes them start spawning them all. I wish they made it clear more of that you can look for queens by just the behavior of the zombie. Like, you can kind of pick up that you can see the glow, but... Like, right here. That's very clear, your first time through. And then, I think there's two zombies, by one by each exit, where you kill it, and it's guaranteed to drop queen. What in the, the queens are such a cool design. I'm sure the designers love that idea, because it gives you all the power of a grenade. But since it doesn't work on humans, it doesn't ruin the balance of the psycho fights. And it makes it really useful for escorting survivors, because you can just throw it at them with impunity. <laughs> Speaking of weird little details, is different zombies have different HPs. And the big difference is female zombies have less hit points than a male zombie. And it's only really noticeable if you're doing the jump kick, because the jump kick can one-shot a female zombie, but not a male zombie. It's really interesting. I wonder like what other statistics there are, or even how many unique zombies there are. I assume they might have some kind of randomization, but I don't think so. I don't think it's like very elaborate. In a way, I'm surprised they didn't have a character editor, and you could do your own thing. Because they must have some good way to make lots of people. I don't know. I wonder what it would be like. Maybe that's why they did the all the clothes and stuff, so you can still have that style of gameplay where you're wearing crazy looks and stuff, but you still get the classic Frank look. I don't know how well that cell phone is working. I think they'd be working with the military, and I assume the military is just blocking all communications to stop, like, any one lone survivor with a ham radio shouting to everyone. Just like, oh, there's zombies, please help us. The government's, like, locked us in. I don't know. Plus, I think she had just notepad open there. I don't think that's a good... It might be her problem. Three days from now. Still, if they are working with a military, I think they would have some kind of, like, line out. Like, oh, we'll leave this one exact channel open. Absolutely. Or they would have just brought equipment with them. It's not very clear how long they were here, because we the zombie outbreak must have already been a thing. You tell me what's going on. But they okay. don't really know what's going on. Hmm. I wonder if they were actually just like stationed Later, in Willamette. We have more pressing business right in a way, Brad does seem to kind of know the layout of the mall. If we have to wait here for three days, we'll need supplies. Hmm. Uh, water, blankets, and the like. That would have been a very interesting touch, is if they had someone actually from the town who would talk to you in the cutscenes, because there's no one that fills a role. Like Otis never talks about it, but it'd be interesting if Brad had like a family or whatever that died, and that could be a thing. And 